Good afternoon and welcome to the instructional video for the new Burstner Alessio C644. I'm going to walk you around the outside of the vehicle first, showing you through some of the key features and then we'll walk on inside. So coming around to the passenger side, we've got alloy wheels specced on this particular one. The mirrors folded manually and then they will automatically adjust both on the top and the bottom mirrors with the little joystick inside. The door opens using the handle and you will find your bonnet release catch can just be found just there by pulling that down. Underneath the seat base here is where your engine battery is located and then by lifting up that little flap you'll find this is where your e-box and this is the main e-box for the vehicle, the brains behind how, how to use everything and the position where you go for your fuses if one of your fuses is blown. So that's located under the passenger seat yeah just behind that we've got the little flap that pulls towards the front for the diesel and the ad blue use the fiat key that will be supplied to you so just press the little button up and then that will go in pop it in and twist it and that will release the diesel filler cap so you can put your diesel in pop it back in twist the cap and it will stay in place just like so Add blue is 15 litres and you just un undo that and then fill that up, pop it back in and twist and lock it in place like so. Once you've finished just press and close that and it will clip in price. You also get a tyre inflation kit and you will also get a towing eye with the vehicle. The blinds which are on the side here pull along. And we also have these installed in the front cab area. Pull them together and they will magnetise in the middle from the opposite side and they will screen out that cab area. For these ones, just a gentle, it's almost like an S shape to close them up. And that will then open and close it back up for you. Well, we're at the front. The bonnet release catch can be found just above the burstner sign. A little yellow handle there. And under here we've got negative points just here and underneath here you'll use your key but you'll lift up that flap and that is where your positive point is. Oil goes in there and then screen wash to the left hand side just up there. When you're closing it down just gently close it and it will close up that front area. Further back of that we've got the toilet cassette. So with your bursting you'll be given a set of keys that has a sweeter key on and that will work for all of the lockers. So press one button that's locked, press the other one and then it will lift up. Inside here it will show you your toilet cassette. Now your toilet cassette can only be removed when the blade valve inside is closed. So to remove it you lift up the little blue lever, slide it towards you and then that will give you the toilet cassette. There is normally a cap on here, so you would remove that, screw the cap off, lift up the unit and press the button. And as it's upright, it will flow out of your little tube here, onto the floor, uh, waste disposal area. Once it's empty, you can then put your chemicals or your sachets back inside there. It also has a handle and wheels for taking to and from your motor on. Uh, nice and simple. There is a bit of space in here to put your belongings as well and when you're finished it'll just lift it up slide it in and then you're waiting for it to just lock in place over the little latch there when you're finished you can close it and then lock it up again back of that we've got the dream event for your hot water and your heating system it does say hot on here so please be careful and don't put anything on here wait before you turn it on Below that there's a little element to tell you where your wastewater drains from. You'll need the little key, you pop that on and then you will just twist it 90, 90 degrees when you want to open the wastewater and the opposite way when you want to close it back up. So that is any water that's gone down your sink, shower areas, things like that. Yep. So that's your wastewater. The mains plug in point, again with a little symbol, goes in here. To release it you just push that little button down and pull your cable out and then when you put your cable in you just push it in and then let your lid rest on the top there round towards the back of the vehicle 
Again, on your key, you'll have a button to open the rear doors or the handle. And then there's a little lever here, which will give you access into the rear area here. Your water tank, it's just located to the right of here. Yeah, and to open and drain the tank, you use this little wheel. So clockwise, we'll allow you to fill it up. Anti-clockwise will allow you to empty it. And we do have two levels here. We have 100 litres and 20 litres. So when you turn it clockwise, you'll hear a click. The first click, if you stopped at that point, will only allow the tank to fill up to 20 litres. And then we'll overflow the tank. Keep going until it's finger tight. And again, it doesn't need to be very hard on this. But keep it going again. So it's finger tight. That will fill all the way up to the top. And when you're filling your water, it will just come out of the vehicle once it is completely full. In here, you'll see we've got some seat belts. I'll come onto them when we go in. And we've got some heating vents into this area. So you can open and close these, depending if you want it on, just by pushing the flaps in there, back so. We've got some little tie down hooks, so for securing your load in this area, and we've also got just up around this corner here, a USB charging point just up there, and a light just here to give you access and visibility in the night. Your awning polars, there's an awning is located up at the top just there, just clips into the little brackets, and I'll send a separate video of how to use that. And above in the integrated high brake light, you'll find your reversing camera is located just there. Always close the left hand side before you close in the right hand side. And then that takes us on to the driver's side. Fill a point again using the key. Just pop in place. Twist it and then it'll allow you to then either spin or if you twist it, it'll allow you to push it in and then open it up just like so. So that will allow you then to fill up your fresh water in it. And as long as you've got it set to the 100 litre, it will then overflow out of there to tell you it's full. You do have an indicator inside to tell you as well. Once you've done it, lock it up and then that you'll find it just spins just like so. Further forward, we've got the electric step, and that's operated just next to the door, so I'll show you that when I go inside. And again, we've got the folding mirrors on here, and the full awning just at the top up there. So pull the door handle towards you, and then slide it to the left. It will lock in place and hold in place just there. We can see just there is the electric step button, and if we press that up, it will go in. Press it down, it will come out. Next to the entrance area, you'll find that we have got the gas locker area and it is supplied with a pigtail and a regulator from the manufacturer. You can get uh, smaller gas bottles in there, so you need to just be careful of what size. It will also take a refillable 2.7 kilogram bottle, which I have tried here previously. The door on this particular one has got a full height fly screen, so just like so. And then that slides back and just holds in place. And then on the cab area here, we've got the electronic handbrake. We've got the steering wheel controls that are just found there. Underneath here is where you will find, by just lifting that up, some more fuses for your batteries. There is one battery in this one, but there are provisions for two batteries. That just hooks on and that is underneath the driver's seat. This one is an automatic gearbox. It is available in manual as well. We've got air conditioning and we've got the multimedia system just there. We've also got a little pop-up bracket. So if you wanted to put your phone anywhere while you're driving, it lifts up and opens up there. To close it, you press it down, put your thumb and then that little lever at the side locks it in place. And then just gently over and lock in place just there. We've also got a lockable glove box and we've also got in here hill descent, traction plus, a locking button, lock the doors, mute button for the volume and we've got your hazard light button. We've also further left got an extra charging point both for USB and the normal jack point just there. To move the seats around because both of the front seats will swivel 
you just pull that lever towards you and that will release the mechanism once it's got past the mechanism then you'll need to slide it forward using that bar just to get it round but both of the seats will slide around there and give you an extra sort of area to sit if you're just stopping by the side of the road or if someone's in bed and they want to come and have a sit at the front you can slide both of them around so that's the view with both of the seats swiveled around the table which I'll remove in a minute stores nice and neatly in here and it locks in place just using this little pull fit in here we've also got the sky roof light which is standard now and this has a blind and a fly screen on and it is also opening to open it you just pull these buttons the middle ones have a push button in so where my thumb is you push it push it and push it and then that will allow you to lift it up what you'll do now is you'll turn the wheels on either side and that will lock it in place if you want to ventilate that front area please be advised that it's never recommended that you drive with this open so always secure it before you're moving on from the vehicle so let's get to the control panel so this can be found just above the entrance door and we've got a power button to turn the power on and off and we've got an indicator to tell us that we're plugged into mains there were your main things on here on the right hand side we've got a power button to tell us what power's in our leisure battery a button to tell us what fresh water level is and a button to tell us what the wastewater level is so very simple on that side but easy to understand when you're leaving the vehicle you simply need to turn that off that turns everything off to the vehicle yeah so with the power on we've got a couple of light switches yeah which will do your outside light and your welcome lights we've also got another light switch down here which will do the main light above in the center area and then we've got two more lights just located here which turn on the lights above the kitchen and then above a rear lounge area yeah in here we've got a 12 volt socket and we've also got a main socket as well we've got a separate light in the kitchen which is turned on by hitting that switch up there yeah and then in the kitchen area we have got storage so all these are push fits push it to close it push it to open below that we've got the sink and the two burner gas hob there is a little indicator to tell you what size of pan to use if you're unsure and this simply press and then ignite and that will work on both of those gas rings lift that up turn the tap and then you can hear that will then run the pump now before you do that once you've filled up with water you'll need to close your drain valves in the vehicle the first ones of which can be found under the oven and that's just in this compartment here so there's two there's a little yellow rocker switch which needs to be laying down horizontal when you want to run it or horizontal or vertical like it is now if you want to drain the system down yeah so if you want to fill it up we just lay that down flat just like so the valve behind is your frost protection valve and at the minute with the diamond pointing towards you and the button out that is in the drain position so use it and operate it in the correct position you turn the diamond on the top and press the button in that will stop water coming out if you've got water coming out of your vehicle underneath this area that is the reason so they need to be closed for you to be able to fill up your boiler system okay you've also got on the opposite side just here in this cupboard just here a false plate that's removable now just down there there's two little levers and they're a screw lever they also need opening and closing when you want to drain or use the vehicle clockwise is closed and anti-clockwise is open and they can be found underneath the opening cupboards in the kitchen underneath the little section with a circle there 
So again, if you've got water coming out from that area, just double check that you have put them in the right positions. Closing them again, just click them. Above in the kitchen, you've got the burst and pack that's supplied. There's a couple of home lights that usually come with the uh, Elysios. Got your tie down pegs and your awning clips if you want to clip it to the side of your vehicle. They're all soft close, so just let it close gently before you're doing it. And then the top one is where you will put all your cutlery and utensils. We've also got a couple of isolation valves. Now the position that you see it in now is in the usable position. Yeah, you got your isolation valve there for your cooker and your uh, oven. Yeah, so just remember and revert back to this if you're unsure. Yeah, again, once it closes, just lock it in place. The large cupboard in the kitchen area and wardrobe also holds the stand for the table, and that just clips into there if you don't want it up. Uh, as a permanent fixture. Whilst in here we've got our oven option. So we've got a light, lights up the area. We've got an igniter, which will ignite it. To open it, you pull the handle towards the front and then to turn it on, you'll just turn the dial round to the temperature that you want it. It's got to be back in the up position and that will tell you that it is turned off. Yep. Next to this, we have another shelving storage unit. So these are removable, so you can set them at different heights. And above that, we've got the TV bracket and we've got your USB points, a blank socket, 12 volt, and a main socket point there. The fridge itself will open just like that. And at the top up here, we press and hold the button. We will show that the light fridge comes to light your freezer compartments at the top and your fridge is here you'll hear it kicking in if you click it again you'll, you'll be able to then increase or decrease your temperature yeah there is a night setting as well that you can select so these ones in the middle are just on a touch screen so once you touch it and goes on it will then So it will allow you to then move it up and down to the desired temperature. There is a night setting and anything that you select will go to the blue option if it's on and the white option if it's not. Okay, when you want to turn it off, press and hold and that will turn off the fridge unit. You're also given an aerial amplifier which will plug into there to give you TV reception if you want to do that. So that's also supplied to you from Burstner. And then we have our bathroom area here. So in the bathroom area itself, we've got a little storage pocket just here. We've got your toilet uh, lid and some chemicals. The light switches, they're located just underneath there for those that can see it. And that's how you turn it off. We've got a little hook for your, ship, uh, for your toilet just there and then we've got the toilet area itself so the table the top of the toilet will turn around and then we'll lift up so you can get it into a comfortable position the blade valve I mentioned at the beginning of the vehicle is operated there so towards the back of the vehicle is closed and then if you pull it towards the front just like that it will open the valve in there so you'll do usually use the toilet by pulling the valve to the, to the front, uh, doing what you need to do. Press the rinse, which is just there, and then you will just close the valve here to keep the smells in the toilet. When you're wanting to use it as a shower, you need to pull it down. You'll need to turn it all the way round. Yeah, and the shower is located by unclip pressing that clip in just there and at the same time just pushing that towards you and then that will hold in place just there your shower comes out of the little stanchion there and hooks up into here and then you do have a little screen to screen off the outside window which again 
just opening is just there and it will lift open to ventilate that area once you've used it. Pull it towards you and then lock it in before you move on. To clip it back in, you push it past the little lever there and that will clip it back in place for your onward journey. In here, you have your drain points that will take it to your grey water. Yeah. The door itself is just a slider door and it magnetises just on here. So you'll just slide it like that to give you some privacy. So I mentioned before about your boiler. Once we've closed them drain valves, what we'll want to do is move the tap to the hot side, lift it up, I will kick in the pump, press it down, we'll turn it off. So there's no pump button on the control panel on here, it's simply just an open and close of the valve once your power's on. Yeah. Once we've got a steady stream of water coming through that tap, initially it'll, it'll fill up with air, you'll want to go to your heater controls and they can be found just to the left hand side of the control panel here. To turn it on you press and hold it and it will illuminate. To the right of here is your thermostat for your temperature and to get the heating controls and hot water working you'll press the button again. Every time you move the little dial it will then move the option to flash on what you're trying to do. So the first option we want to do is turn the heating on. So we'll go on the motor on with the temperature, turn it to the desired temperature and then press the button in. I always then go to the fuel next. It is important that you're either using the fuel option, so the diesel option, or the electric that you select it relatively quickly so you don't have any error codes. And if you're not on electric, take it off the EL uh, and use your diesel. So you've got diesel heating. You've got a mix one, which is diesel and electric. Mix two, which is diesel and two kilowatt electric, one kilowatt electric only, and two kilowatt electric only. You choose whichever is suitable for you. The strongest, most powerful option is the mix two. Yeah, and that will use diesel and two kilowatt electric to get you up to temperature, both on your heating and your hot water. If it goes off, just press the button again, don't worry. The next option we want to go to is the fan speed. So we've got eco, which is slow, high, which is fast. And then if you run the high on for five or six minutes till the fan gets going, you can also select boost. And what boost does is take all the power away from the hot water to get your heating up to temperature and vice versa on your water. So if you have it on boost on your water, which we do then by turning the dial back to the thermostat with the water on, You'll see it'll give us an option of turning it off. Eco, which is 40 degrees. Hot, which is 60 degrees. Or boost, which takes you up to 60 degrees as quick as possible. But it will not heat the vehicle. So you choose which one you want. You can run this heating system without putting water on as long as you've turned that off. Now the light will start stop flashing once it's up to temperature and once it goes out of time, it will go back to tell you what your time and your temperature is on the main settings. To turn it off, you press and hold it for a few seconds and it will tell you that it's turned off. So that is your heating system, guys. Quite a uh, widely used system, quite easy to get your head around. We, in the door, we've got some little door pockets as well and some little pockets that I missed telling you about just up there. In the back, so before we get to it, we've got a Hecke, which has a fly screen and it has a blind on. Yeah, to open it up, press the button with your thumb, pull your handle down and that will release it either fully or to the two or three different points along the ridge there. Before moving on, press it up above it and then you will be able to move on nice and easily. So the table itself, like I say, it's fully removable. Yeah. It locks in place just with the handle there. So that's how you will lock it in and stop it from sliding around. You will also need to secure it at the beginning using this little lever here. So clockwise will tighten it up, anti-clockwise will remove it. Once you've rem undone it, you'll want to lift it off. And I'll do this in a couple of stages. 
So the first stage is to remove it off. When you're pushing it on, you'll need to press down in the middle, line it up, press down in the middle, and the grooves lock into the grooves on the actual base itself, yeah? Once you've got it in, then you'll twist it to secure it in place. The base itself, you'll lock in place by pulling the little handle, and again, you'll undo it, just like so. Yeah, and then it'll loosen up the base, so eventually it will then fully remove. from the holes in the floor you do the you'll see the floor little mountain there simply what you're doing is you're tightening with that finger with the lever on the top the bolt at the bottom which secures it all in place and like i say it goes into that area there for stowing away so that's where the bracket for the for the base of the table lives just a bungee cord to hold it in place and then at the front here, it will slide into the little bottom section there, slides along, and then you'll just see that just, if I just push it back a little bit, there's a little metal clip here. Push it up to the bolt, turn the lever, or pull it out, sorry, and then that will lock it in place so it is secured for you. Yep, so that's where your table goes. With the table out of the way, it will show you the rear area here. So we've got the sliding window. We'll just press us along, releases off that little catch just there and we'll open. And then you can slide it all the way along. And again on here, we have a fly screen and we have a blind. Yeah. In place, just pull it back and you'll hear it clip in place. The one on the opposite side is like the other ones, which just open at the front and then we'll just slide up to the desired level again with a fly screen and a blind on the as standard pull it down and lock it in place again before we're moving on to get to the seat belts they're just behind there we have that isofix at the bottom just there and the seat belts can go over the actual seat cushions themselves yeah We've got your headrests which are adjustable just up there. We've also got heating vents and we've got store down points just in this area for those that want to do it. You can also remove this as well from here.
So your ladders are at a set height, just like that. So they will go on once the bed is pulled down. You'll remove the headrest covers and put the infill section to give it a full front to back bed if you want it. And that's how you would do it first of all. To get it lower, you'll need to remove the cushions off. So I'll just undo the cushions and show you how to do that. So you'll move the back of the cushions and just store them underneath in the middle. That's your first step. And then you can lower it down if you want to do that. It is a smaller bed when it is down, but you can also operate that as well. To release it up, you'll just lift the button and then that will go and release the bed up just like so. Yeah. So you can remove the headrests as well. So they'll just push them levers forward. That will remove the headrest off completely if you don't want them on. And in this area here, we've got storage unit. We've got a push button light just up here and a storage unit on either side. The point for the home lights to sit in are also found in this area here. And then we've got more storage at low level and above in this area as well. Just like so. So above the bed as well, I just missed that before. You've got a opening roof light and this has a winding handle in the middle and that will give you lots of ventilation in that area as well as having a fly screen and blind on. And I've set the bed up just showing you with the headrest removed as well. For those that would want to see how long it is, it goes all the way back just there. So that concludes pretty much our instructional video for this. I think you'll agree, great layout, the Burstner C644. We look forward to your feedbacks and comments. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. More importantly, we hope you enjoy your new adventures. Thanks for watching. Bye now.